as always, the first thing we do is look for something that's in common that we can factor out of everything, and that would be 2p times p. Okay, so that'll leave us with 36 minus p squared. Okay, and this is what we call a difference of squares. That's a square, and that's a square, and there's your difference, there's your subtraction. If you remember, a difference of squares factors is the square root plus the square root, the square root of p squared is p, and 6 minus p. And you know, if we were to multiply this out, we have 6 times 6 is 36. 6 times negative p is negative 6p. P. Positive p times 6 is positive 6p, so that's where we get our cancellation, and then negative p squared. That's what happens when you multiply these things. They're called conjugates, but that middle sign is different. We get the, the middle term canceled out, and then we get the 36 minus p squared. And so we got to look out for those difference of squares. That's going to be how we solve, uh, solve equations of third degree, is by factoring that difference of squares. That last thing was just a check. We're just checking the prove that when we factored it, that was the factored form of 36 minus p squared. Okay, next question. factor out something that they have in common. Do they have anything in common? C squared. So at least C squared minus 100. What do we have here? Difference of squares. You got a difference. You got two squares. Difference of two squares. C squared times C plus 10 times C minus 10 equals 0. Here is the, the clever part. We have a thing times another thing times another thing. And we use the zero product property. The zero product property says we're multiplying things together and we're getting zero. So we know what? What do we know for sure? One of them has to be zero. One of these things I've circled. Either c squared is zero, or c plus 10 is zero, or c minus 10 is zero. So we let all of them be equal to zero and see what C would have to be in each of those possibilities. Okay, take the square root of both sides, you get C is zero. Subtract 10, add 10 to both sides, and we get these three answers. Okay. And if you look at the answer for number 10 or number 50 back here, you get zero and plus or minus 10. That's all they're saying. A positive and a negative 10 both came out. Next question? Anytime you can make even groups, groups of even size, then uh, or equal size, not even size, but uh, equal size, uh, then we go ahead and try factor by grouping because it may not. All right. So we group the first two after we make sure that we've written the powers in descending order. So b to the third, then b squared, then b to the first, and then your constant. 
and group them in two groups. I circle them. I don't use parentheses. Parentheses can be confusing because it looks like, you know, distribute something through these parentheses. So I use these ambiguous circles. They don't mean anything mathematically. All right, so we don't confuse ourselves with parentheses. Then we look in this group, this first group of two, and say, what do they have in common? B squared is what they have in common. B squared times B minus 5. Right, then we look at the second group of two, and we say, what do they have in common? What's that? Four. four. Yeah. But I always say if that first term is negative, then factor out a negative four. Okay. So factor out a negative four. And what do we wind up with a B? Minus five. Because negative four times negative five is positive 20. Okay. And then we know that factor by grouping worked because what? Why do, how do we know that factor by grouping worked? There we see it tells you you can move on to the next stage of factor by grouping. You got a factor of b minus five. Okay. We'll throw parentheses around here and draw your attention to uh, yeah, they both have a common factor of b minus five. We're going to take that b minus five factor out. B minus five factor out, just like we took out the factor of b squared from this group, put it outside the parentheses. Took out this negative four, put it outside that parentheses. Now we're going to take the b minus five, put it outside this parentheses. So we got b minus five times what's left, b squared minus four. Okay, follow that so far. It's good. All right. Anything else beyond this? You notice anything? this in particular? The difference of squares. B squared is a square, four is a square, so we factor that difference of squares. B plus two, B minus two. And once you get down to where your B's are to the first power, that's what those, those to, to the first power, there's no more factoring to do. Unless for some reason they have like a common factor, like a two or a five, but they shouldn't, because you should have pulled that out at the very beginning if there was one. And there wasn't, to start with. Let's get rid of those first powers, because it's kind of funny. Next question? What are you drinking, Bridget? What'd you get this morning? What? What'd you get? Mocha. Any other questions? All feeling good? Feeling strong? 47. 1st as always, we look for a common factor among all of them. 3B, right here. This has a 3, 3, 3, a B, B, and a B. So we can pull those, those out of every one of those factors, leaving a B squared. So we divide this by 3, we get 8. Divide this by B, we get B. This here is uh, 15. Right. 3 times 15 is 45. B. We don't have any B factors left here. Okay. And what next? Now that we pulled out the common factor, what do we do next? together should be 15. Okay. We also know that this number is going to get multiplied by b and this number is going to get multiplied by b as well. So we're going to have two b terms that we combine together by addition. 
So when we put those B terms together, we should get our B term of 8B. So what two numbers do that for us? So it multiplies 15, and it creates two B terms that add to 8B. Yeah? Um, 3 and 5. 3 and 5. 3 plus 5. Something else times something else equals zero. If we're multiplying two things together and we're getting zero, we know one of them is zero. So we set each factor equal to zero. Subtract three on both sides, subtract five on both sides. And the three solutions. If B is zero, or B is negative three. B is negative 5, let's do 3 times negative 5 to the third, plus 24 times negative 5 squared, plus 45 times negative 5, plus 3 times, that's going to be a negative 125, plus 24 times, we have positive 25, minus 225, and this would be uh, negative 375 plus uh, 600 times 225. And we got 3 plus 6. So this together, negative three, 375, negative 325 is negative 600. So we get 600 minus 600 at 0, just like it was supposed to come out to be. Or you can plug in negative 3 in there. We can plug negative 3 here. We can plug in negative 3 here. In any of these, these are all equivalent, of course. We wouldn't change what it's actually worth. They all need to be equivalent. They'll all be solved by any of those, 0, negative 3, or negative 5. Other questions? Think of one, go ahead and ask. If you uh, think you're ready to go with the review, then you put everything away, put the piece of paper. You want to come and show us how to factor the problem? there on that that line? Okay, because this you can always check and see by multiplying it back together, see if it comes back out. What if we multiply this back out? What will happen when we multiply negative three x by x? Three x squared, negative three x squared. Right? And negative three x times two. Negative 
six x. Okay, but if we just take out that x, we should be good. Right now, negative three times x is negative three x. Negative three times two is negative six. That works out just fine. That. Uh, no, no, no. Not that. That's still negative. That. This guy right here. Okay. Um. That got fixed. Uh, so this looks good then. So we got that common factor of x plus 2, right? x plus 2, x plus 2. Took that out. Right there. Took it out. There it is. Took it outside the parentheses. We're left with 5x squared minus 3. Okay? Let's talk about this. This is just the same as before, x plus 2, sure. Let's double check and see if this is the same as that. All we have to do is multiply it back out. All right. To do that, we need to distribute the 5x. And we'll distribute the negative 3. What's 5x times 5x? 25x squared. Mm, I don't know. That's, maybe, maybe something else will come along and add it or something. But let's, let's continue and see. 5x uh, times 3. 15x, then we get negative 15x. Okay, so that, that cancels out. It seems like it's a good thing. And then negative 3 times positive 3 is negative 9. So what we get is x plus 2 times 25x squared minus 9. Okay, that's not correct, right? Because it should be, like when we multiply these out, if, if we factored it correctly, it should turn out to be 5x squared minus 3. So who can speculate on what's going on here between these two steps? What was this person thinking? Yeah, of course, like a difference of, yeah, a difference of squares. Okay. But when you factor a difference of squares, let's use an, an example like um, uh, 4x to the second minus 16. No, let's not do that, because 4 and 16 are sharing factors. Let's do 25. So that is a difference of squares and difference, and all of the numbers involved are square numbers. They have square roots. So this one would factor as, like this number right here is actually a factor of four. It's the square root of four. That's two x and two x. Two x times two x will give us the four x squared. The five x times five x gives us twenty five x squared. We don't want twenty five x squared. We just want five x squared. Okay. The same here, we got plus 5 and minus 5. Why? Because of the 5 times the negative 5 will give us the negative 25. But negative 3 times positive 3 gives us negative 9, not negative 3. Okay? So if it is a difference of squares, great. Go ahead and factor it. If it's not, it's okay to just say, I'm done. There's no more factoring to be done. So if these two do not multiply to make 5x squared minus 3, so they must not be... Uh, a factorization of 5x squared minus 3. Okay. So it just must not work. It must not be a, a factorization. Just a little tip here. Um, when you have two terms like this, Really, the only thing you could do to factor it would be to factor something out that's in common, like if I had a 2 or a 7 or an x or something like that in common. Other than that, unless it's a difference of squares like this one, it's not going to be factorable. At least not right now in Algebra 1. When we start thinking about more complex numbers, we could factor it uh, using some weird numbers that, that we don't want to deal with at this moment. So right now we just say it's unfactorable. It's unfactorable over the integer using integers right now, not fractions or weird decimals or anything like that, just good old integers, like whole numbers. Okay. There we go, x plus 2 times 5x squared minus 3, that's how we want to factor it. Next. Alright, anybody want to come up and work this one out? You can just copy the work of the person whose quiz you have, and that way, like, it's not all you.
noticing I gave you some bad instructions. What is not? I mean, look at my instructions and then look at what I asked you to do. Well, no, I'm talking about what I wrote, like up there in black. What is? What doesn't match up between what I told you to do and, and the, the this thing that I gave you here? I asked you to do what? And then what is this? Or what is this not? An equation. What does an equation mean? Equal to two. Equal to, well, equal to something. Got to have an equal sign and standard procedure would be equal to zero. I don't know why I didn't do that, but I guess I just got absent-minded. So if you just made it equal to zero and solved it, great. If you didn't solve it because it's not an equation, that's fine too, and my mistake. Okay. Um, so until it's an equation, we can't really solve it. So you've got to set it equal to zero before you can solve anything, or set it equal to something. Zero would be the easiest thing. Set it equal to zero, set it equal to zero, set it equal to zero. Now we can solve it by setting each factor equal to zero. There we go. Uh, let's just double check this work here. That looks good. Uh, any questions about that? Factor by grouping to start with. First group had an x squared in common. Next group had a negative 4 in common. Turns out when we write the what's left over here from factoring out the x minus 2 factor, we get x minus x squared minus 4, which is a difference of squares. x plus 2 times x minus 2. Set each factor equal to 0 and solve. If you got no questions, just pass it back. Score, make sure you score it out of 8 first. And then I'll come around and mark it down. <laughs> 